Hello, my gorgeous friends of Webflow, I'm Francesco, and if you don't know who am I, well, in this channel we do Webflow things and we make them simple and accessible to everybody from time to time by using a whiteboard. In today's video, we are going to merge the Canvas API and Webflow to create a fancy Canvas cursor tracking effect, mm, an attributes-only solution, so you won't need to code, and we are going to build a project that will look exactly like this. This project is available inside the clonable and you will find the link to this clonable and to the instructions page containing all the steps required in the description down below. But now, let's take a look at the whiteboard. And the setup here is very very simple, we just need an element, it could be a section, a container, a div block, that will be our component, that is the element that will host the canvas cursor tracking effect. And the only required property here is that its position needs to be set to relative, and we will understand why in a moment. Then inside our component we will throw a Webflow embed element which will host our canvas. And the only required property for this embed element is that its position needs to be set to absolute with the full option on. And we need this because we want to make sure that the canvas takes up all the available space inside our component, but we don't really want to mess up with the layout of whatever is inside our component. This is why we are using a position of absolute for the embed element in combination with a position of relative for our component. And then it's just a matter of using the right attributes, and the only required attribute here is the FC cursor tracking attribute with the value of component that we need to apply, yes, to our component. And all the other three attributes are just options that we can use or we can just stick with the default values. And all these three attributes, if we want to use them, um, have to be applied to the component element. And so here we have the FC cursor tracking stroke color that will allow us to specify a color for the stroke and the color here needs to be expressed in the hexadecimal format. Then we have the FC cursor tracking stroke thickness that will allow us to specify the thickness in pixels for the stroke. And then finally we have the FC cursor tracking stroke length that we that will allow us to specify the number of traits the stroke will be composed of. And yeah, that's it. Now, without further ado, let's just jump right into Webflow and let's build this project together. And let's get it started. We'll create a couple of examples here. In the first one, we'll add the canvas cursor tracking effect to two separate images, while in the second one, we'll be adding the canvas cursor tracking effect to an entire section. And as we have already mentioned, the setup here is very, very simple. And let's start by adding a section here. Then we can throw in a container. And inside our container, let's add a div. This will be our cursor tracking content wrapper. And this will just be a grid. Let's use REMs for the gap. And inside here, let's throw the first div. This will be our cursor tracking image wrapper. And just to make things a bit fancier, actually nothing, nothing special, let's just add an outline here of, I don't know, seven pixels, pure white or yeah almost and and one thing we need to do for the effect to work is we need to set the position to relative and now inside our image wrapper we can throw an image and let's choose the source let's pick this one let's call it car source tracking image. Let's give a width of 100% out of auto. And then let's duplicate this image wrapper once. And let's also set its position to manual. Let's put it in the second row, second column. So like this. And then 
Yeah, we can add the first combo class here, TC1, combo class 1, and maybe push it down by 7 REM. Then we can select this one, add a combo class of CC2, combo class 2. We can push this up by the same amount, and we can also change the image. Let's pick this one. And that's it. Now there's one more step we need to take, which is we need to add an embed element to uh, both our image wrappers. And this embed element needs to host our canvas, just like this, the canvas HTML element. We can hit save and close. And let's call this cursor tracking canvas. So here, names don't really matter, but and then we need to set the position of this embed element to absolute, full, and to make sure that the canvas is always on top of everything, let's pick a very, very high value for the Z index, something like, I don't know, 9,999. Let's just copy this embed element and paste it inside the second image wrapper. And now we just need to follow the instructions that are highlighted here. So first, let's copy the scripts. And we need to paste them inside the head tag here. Then we can hit save. And now we need to choose our, we could pick our component, which is uh, the section container div block that will host the cursor tracking effect. In our case, our image wrappers. So Let's just copy the name of the attribute. Let's select the first image wrapper. Let's add a new attribute. Let's paste the name. And here, if we don't want to copy paste the value of the attribute, we can just type component. Let's do the same here for the second image, image wrapper. Let's paste the name of the attribute. Let's write component here. And now let's go back to the instructions page. We uh, can set a few options here. Stroke color first. So let's say that we want to stick with the default value for the first image wrapper, but we want to choose a specific value for the second image wrapper. So let's first copy the, the name of the attribute. So let's select the second image wrapper here. Let's paste the name. And let's say that we want some publish color and let's use the hexadecimal format here for the color. So, and let's write FF, something like, yeah, 00, zero DD. And then back to the instructions page, we can set the stroke thickness. And let's say that we want to set the stroke thickness for the first image wrapper, but we want to stick with the default value for the second image wrapper. So let's copy the name of the attribute and select the first image wrapper. Let's add a new attribute. Let's paste the name here. And let's say that we want this to be six. Then back to our instructions page, we can also set the stroke length. And let's say that we want to set the stroke length for both the first and the second image wrapper. So let's copy the name of the attribute. Let's go back to our project. Let's add uh, an attribute, new attribute for the first image wrapper. And here, let's say that we want a 20. And for the second, image wrapper, let's say that we want a very, very high value, let's say 50. And now we just need to hit publish, wait for our Webflow to publish our website. And then we can go to the live link and we can go over the first image and we can see that it's working. And we can go to the second image and it's working. If we go out, of course, nothing happens. We can go back onto the first image, back to the second, and here, of course, nothing will happen. And that's it for the first example. Now we'll build the second one, which is, and we are going to apply the canvas cursor tracking effect to an entire section. So let's go ahead with the second example and let's add a new section here. And let's also give it a class of, I don't know, relative because this section will be hosting our canvas cards or tracking effect so our canvas and so its position needs to be set to relative now let's throw in our main container 
then another div block. Let's call it just section content wrapper. And this will be a grid with just two columns. Let's stick with two REMs. And then here we can throw just an image. This will be our section image. Let's choose an image and let's pick this one. Let's set its width to 100%. Auto, yeah, so this is definitely not required. And then let's throw in a div. This will be our section text wrapper. And inside our text wrapper, let's throw a heading, h2, and just placeholder text. So let's duplicate it once. And yeah, that's it, nothing fancy this time. Now, let's follow the instructions once again. So first, we need to mm, specify our component, which in this case is our section. So let's copy the name of the attribute. Let's select our section. Let's add a new attribute. Let's paste the name here. Let's write component. Then go back to the instructions page. Let's mm, set the color. So let's first copy the name of the attribute. Let's add a new attribute to the section. Let's paste the name. And let's say that we want some kind of, yeah, let's say yellow. So again, hexadecimal format. So FF for red, FF for green, and 00 for blue. Then back to our instructions page, stroke thickness. Let's copy the name of the attribute. Let's add a new attribute to the section. And let's say that we want this to be seven. And now, last option here, stroke length. Let's copy the name of the attribute. Let's add a new attribute, paste the name. And let's say here that we want, I don't know, 35. And what did we forget? We forgot to add our canvas. So let's do that. Let's select our section. Let's add an embed element here to host our HTML canvas. Let's see, the save and close. This again will be our, let's use the class that we used here because yeah, we need to do the exact same thing. So let's use the name here. And now we have this embed element with the position set to absolute, full, and the Z-index to 9,999. And that should be it. Now let's publish the website once again. Wait for our Webflow to publish our website. Let's inspect the live link. We scroll down. We enter the section. And we have our canvas cursor tracking effect on the entire section. We move out of the section, nothing happens. We move once again inside the section and the effect is here. And so, yeah, that's it. Once again, easy peasy. Thank you so much everybody for watching this video and if you liked it well, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any suggestions or want to share thoughts about things I might improve, well, feel absolutely free to throw a comment down below. And before I forget, my weekly recommendation today is a song from Super Beaver and the song is called Hitotoshite. So, see you next time. Ciao, matane!